So for over a decade, the Bank of England base rate was at a 350 year low. And then overnight, it seemed, it was actually two years, it went up, raced up to 5.25%. And now it seems like everyone, in inverted commas, is talking about rate cuts. But how low can they go and how fast can that happen? So let's look into the history a little bit. You know, Bank of England base rates, like I say, 350 mm -hmm. year low, I think everybody knows that went down to 0 0.5 <clears> and then 0 0.0, sort of 0 0.1, very, yeah. very low rates, 350 People low. People thought it was going to last forever. Uh, exactly. Um, it was, uh, some people would say, a slow, gradual, relentless, quick, right, it took two years to get yeah. there, and it was a shock for... I think a lot of us didn't see it creeping up, because it was just going little by little. Little by, by little, little yeah. but it just kept going, kept going, and I guess at that point people aren't sure where it would top out. It topped out at 5.25% in the end, um, but it certainly shocked a lot of your investors. Talk about the, you know, the, yeah. the, 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 the mindset while that was happening there was two, of the investor landlord. two types. So you had guys who we'd sourced houses for, they'd bought them in cash with a plan to renovate them and then refinance. Yep. They sat on them, yep. obviously, because the product rates were 6 to 7% for a lot now of people. That, that's very interesting. Massive. Yeah. yeah. Uh, Bank then, of England base rate and product rate, yeah. and the mortgage product rate, different. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And my feeling is that the product rates overshot where they really could maybe have it out because of the shock. You know, you're going from mm. that, that to, from 0 0.5 to 5.25, and you don't know where it's going to stop. That's right, yeah. Everybody's like, oh my goodness, yeah. where's it going to end? What's going to happen? So we had the and, other... and we had 9% pay rate we on did. some mortgages. But then obviously, that had its impact on house prices, which were sitting stagnant in the affordable bit of the market we're in. Mm -hmm. They didn't drop a lot, but they stayed where they were. Um, so that then meant the cash rich guys were piling in mm -hmm. and then just sitting on them. Yep. And then now, those guys and the guys who had already bought yep. are now all refinancing at the same time. There's lots of money coming back into the market and people are buying again and the house prices where we buy are starting to, Start. to go up because there's lots of people coming in. Yeah. Yeah. Um, and that's really what happened for us. Yeah. Lot, lots of people buying cash, but most of our type of investors eventually put a mortgage on it. Yeah. So yeah. The, the, the lack of mortgage... Some of them buy with a mortgage up front as well. You know, Some guys haven't got enough money to buy a house yeah. in cash and then re renovate. Some have got a more limited part where we do it find them something mortgageable, yep. do maybe a light renovation, a compli some compliance work, and even those guys, well, they were, I don't want to pay a 6.5% mortgage, I'll wait. Yep. So the availability and the cost of mortgages definitely holds the market back. Mm. Um, and we see that. Totally. From my it own does point for of the view, residential market. Yeah, of course it does, absolutely. Yeah. From my own point of view, I buy houses in cash, um, renovate them, and then generally refinance out. I've also got properties in the portfolio that need refinancing every yeah. two, three, four, five or years, you know, on the cycle. And I paused quite a few of them, mm. looking at a, a pay rate of seven, eight, nine percent. Mm, yeah. A lot of people uh, slowed down because they, they stopped pulling money out. Yep. Just in general, like, oh, my plan was to pull a hundred grand out of the portfolio on the next lot of refinancing. Yep. I'm not doing that. Not doing that. Yeah. yeah. So, but the market, the property market, your investors still buying chugged along slowly yeah but not full throttle like yeah, it had been. Not. So let's talk about what's happened already this year in yeah. 2024. Um, so th there's been one cut so far. Uh, I think that there was a 50-50 chance of there having been two cuts yeah. already and it had been talked around, but so we've come down from 5.25 to 5%. 5 um, rates were held last meeting. So last meeting, this is the Bank of England uh, Monetary Policy Committee. They held the rates in October. Um, which disappointed many. Um, well, probably disappointed half of everybody. Yeah. everybody. It's 50-50, yeah, exactly. wasn't it? Um, there are two more opportunities to reduce rates this year in 2024. And we think uh, what's going to happen is they will? Well, there's another one in November, another one in December. And, well, you tell me, how do you think that your investors are behaving now. I, I, I know the answer, it's a rhetorical one for me, but I know the answer. So Cracking on. They, they, they feel like the, the cuts are coming. Oh, yeah. Whether there's one or two, I don't think they really mind because they know that the cuts are coming. And the yeah. product rates are, are, you know, workable now anyway, so. Yeah, so I thought we'd today have a little look at what the, uh, what the economists are saying, what the Bank of England are saying, 
um, what some of the newspapers write, you know, writing their, their opinions. Our broker, we've got our, our broker, yeah. we've asked, we've yeah, asked yeah, our yeah. broker, a company, a mortgage broker, we've got, we work very closely with uh, one particular mortgage broker. They're part of a wider, what do you call it, a syndicate, council, so they've got all that. But um, from the Bank of England, the mood music is it's slightly mixed, but it's... Um, it's all pointing in rough in, in the same direction. It's just how far and how fast. There's two main voices. Hugh Pill is the chief economist of the Bank of England, and there's Andrew Bailey, who he's the governor, of course. They're both talking of cuts. So they're both yeah. talking that yeah. The, and and when, they, when when you say talking, that's a direct message to the market. They don't just have a, a quick chat. It's an official. They know that when they talk, people are listening. Totally. Uh, so their talk is taken very seriously. Um, Andrew Bailey said something very surprising last week, quite surprising. Some people weren't surprised, but the market seemed to uh, react warmly to it. He said that, and I'm reading it directly here, if, if inflation remains in check, the bank may be able to be more activist, that was his words, over reducing borrowing costs. That was in an interview with The Guardian. Now, what he means by that is, instead of um, perhaps just the, the one or um, one cut this year and slightly less aggressive ones next year. That would be the sort of the Hugh Pill um, d uh, different opinion. Then talking about reducing rates in the markets took it to mean we could reduce rates in November and December yeah. this year and then next year reduce them a little bit quicker and further um, than, than had been talked about this year. The, the upshot of that was several people commented that Mortgage rates, not Bank of England based rates, but mortgage rates could be sub 3%, so that's a 2% rate, within a year or 18 mm. months. That would be the most optimistic view. So I, I think that, that is quite optimistic. I don't, yeah, I, I sounds, don't, I, that sounds a little bit strong to me. me. But the fact he's talking about that, Hugh Pill, who is the, um, the, the other person in the Bank of England that's still talking about it, um, he's warning against too deep cuts too fast but he does still want uh, rates cut, but not quite as fast as Mr. Bailey. If you read between the lines all there, um, he, he's talking about, instead of being 18 months, three years. Yeah. Okay. So you get to the same point. Interesting, and this was this is the bits that I picked out. Um, Hugh Pill was saying that the high levels of interest rates are not the key reason behind the weakness in British investment in general. He was talking about that since the 2008 global financial crisis, which is quite a bloody long time ago, hey? you know, still talking about well, that. Nearly 20 years. Yeah, ago. yeah. Um, the there has Brexit. been there has mm. been high levels of uncertainty since that point. And if you think about it, it's totally true. Go on. Yeah, yeah. Brexit, um, COVID, COVID, and then the Russian invasion mm. of Ukraine. So, you know, if we put it all together, we're there's about, always a, <coughs> this is it. There's always something <laughs> that will put off people, of course, of course. and it always will be. Um, we like the uncertainty. If you're it's always a opportunities. If, if, you're, yeah. if you're a property investor, a bit of an uncertainty gives you opportunity totally. always. Um, so yeah, let's let put it all together. The market's moved, bond markets particularly, um, speaking to our mortgage brokers. Here's what we think is going to happen to the buy-to-let mortgage market in 2025 and beyond. Are we going to do our pause now? Yeah. So, let's do right. a pause. So okay. put thing, in the comment, it. we're going to pause the video for two seconds, put a comment what do you think is going to happen? Where do you think rates are going to go over the next year going into 2025? Okay, so we're pausing. I'll tell you what we, what we think. Um, so Monetary Policy Committee is expected to cut interest rates by a quarter of a point in November. We think they will. Yeah. We think they will. I think so. Um, we then think it's a 50-50 that the rate will be decreased in December. If it isn't then, it will be early, early next in, year. in 2025. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. Um, we think that base rates will steadily decrease over the next 18 to 36 months, depending on a lot of factors outside of our control. And I don't think you can be any more accurate than that. And I don't think you need to be any more no. accurate than that. If there are, the Bank of England talks about three possible scenarios, but cutting a long story short and reading between the lines on all of them, they all end up at roughly the same point in any way, but the only thing that changes is the timeline. Is it a year, two years, three years? Mm. And, and, you know, it's a bit more complicated than that, but that's roughly where we're heading. So uh, what are we can do about it? That's, that's the, um, the lock shot. We are investor landlords, so what are we going to do about that?
Uh, what, keep investing. What, well, hey, hey, what are your landlords saying and doing? Things are waking up. They have been they for are. the last six months. Yeah. There's a new breed of investor now in the market as well. Younger, mm. 35 to 45 years old, piling in. They've made some money for the first time. I think I mentioned this previously. Mm. Um, the guys who are in their 60s, you know, closing in on 70s, uh, getting to that retirement age, thinking about the amount of changes there's been, um, and they're finding it in their eyes, more tricky and difficult. But the newer breed of investor don't see any of those problems. They don't think about rates. Yeah. Rates are what they are. Compliance expectations are what they yeah. are. I think if you're a landlord and you're at retirement age and you were thinking of retiring, and people think of retiring for a decade, don't they? Like there's, there's, a, there's a wide mm. window where you think, yeah. now might be the time, you know? Um, you, and uh, Adam will, we've got a landlord sell for free. If you're a landlord and you're thinking of selling, be in touch. We'll look at your single property, your entire portfolio. Yeah. You do a review on it to make sure that you really should sell. You know, could you optimize mm-hmm. it and keep it for a, you know to take advantage of the next rise? Or is now the time to get everything compliant, dusted down, make absolutely perfect, and we tend to sell it occupied. That's oh better. yeah, definitely. Well, Especially if you wanted to buy it with a buy to let mortgage, it will look it'll better. Look loads better. Yeah. The idea that you've got to get rid of your tenant, take that uncertain yeah. period where it's vacant yeah. and you need to yeah. you know, no, get it all, get it, get it as nice as it can be. We put all the green ticks and this get is it. Sold. If you want to sell, we can help you sell. If you want to buy, we can source for you. If you want yep. to do a renovation, we can do that. Um, but now is the time, and we can let and manage. So the, the foundations, all those things. the foundations are there. You've got a, is it a three or four um, percent product rate somewhere around there? Is it now or two or three years? It's going to be somewhere in the window. Mm. But whatever that is, there's your foundation. Whether you've got 12 months, six months, 18 months, there's only one yeah. way it's gonna go, and it starts now, so so get going with it. Where you're gonna sell, exactly. keep, buy some more. And your property's a long-term thing. How can people be in touch with you, Anna? So there will be a link to book a call with me in the description of wherever you're um, you know, listening to this or watching this. Feel free to book a call. Okay, well, I think that's enough for today. That's where we see the Bank of England base rates going, and product rates in particular for buy-to-let mortgages. Uh, yeah. If you hope, agree or disagree, enjoyed. let us know in the comments. Let us know in the comments. Hopefully you enjoyed that. Like and subscribe. And thanks for listening. Cheers. Bye now.